Hi all, and welcome back. Uh, just quickly, I'd like to address, oh my god, I'm at 5,000 subscribers. When did this, I, you guys, I, thank you, thank you so much, this means so much to me. But I know you're not here for this, so let's just go on right ahead. And since we've already gone over the grand finales of these shows, I'd like to talk about the very first episodes of Amphibia and the Owl House. Anne and Beast slash Best Friend and a Lying Witch and a Warden. Yeah, that's right, we wasting no time today. Though before anything else, I should address the elephant in the room. Technically, neither of these episodes are actually a pilot. A pilot episode of a show, if you don't know, is a single episode created to test how popular the potential show could end up being. But when I say pilot in this video, I'm simply referring to the first episodes of both these series. So, without further ado, let's go over both Amphibia and the Owl House's quote-unquote pilot episodes and try and figure out just what makes a good opening. For those who haven't seen the show, basically 90% of Amphibia's episodes are actually split into two separate 10 minute parts with full 20 minute episodes being reserved for season finales or other especially important events. In this case, the very first episode takes the form of Anne or Beast and Best Fronds and is one of only two or three times that two minisodes act as basically a two-parter, one directly continuing after the other. Of course, Owl House is much simpler, thank goodness, it's boom, one episode, easy as that. Now, before I get lynched in the comments, I'm going to say right now what I really like about the Owl House's first episodes, what I think it does well, before I uh, tear into it. The introduction of Luz is really fun. Right off the bat, you get a really solid grasp of her character, her flaws, as well as her strengths. She's immediately likeable, and while quirky is usually seen as a detriment for her character, the show goes all the way with it from the get-go, and by god does it work. I also really like Ida and King's relationship right from the start. Her little talk about his crown and... Besides, us weirdos have to stick together, you know? ...is one of the most heartwarming moments of the early show. And, of course, Luz's initial reaction to King is absolutely glorious. Okay, well, moving on from that, A Lying Witch and a Warden is a really mediocre episode that does a real disservice to an incredible show, there I said it. To best show why, I think it's best to compare it to none other than Amphibia, which I think has a really good pilot and is actually one of my favourite episodes in season 1. First and foremost, let's talk about our characters and how they got into these worlds because that is a really important part. Well, pfft. A really important part is that I have good news! Remember last time? Hi, so less than 1% of you are subscribed and it would be genuinely awesome if you could like and subscribe and comment. It worked! More than 1% of you are subscribed! Like, <laughs> thank you so much! Of course, it would still be amazing if you want to like and subscribe and comment to let me know your thoughts and all that good stuff. Okay, I'm sorry for the bother, back to the show, let's continue. See. Both Luz and Anne accidentally end up in the Boiling Isles and Amphibia respectively. However, in Luz's case, she has every opportunity to go back home, is even offered it by the end of the episode, and chooses to stay there. That's important. Anne is trapped and alone, and after telling Sprig that she doesn't know how she got there, well, we find out that's complete bollocks. A very nice sprinkle of character building, I might add, showing how little she trusts the planters without outright saying it. At the end of the first half, we get a very intriguing little glimpse at the strange relic that seems to have warped her there, leaving her stranded. Amphibia's setup hooks you. It leaves you asking questions, intrigued as to what just happened, what this box is, how she's going to get home. With the Owl House, the only real hook you get is, well, what wacky adventures will this girl get up to learning magic? Which isn't a bad hook, I guess, but it certainly isn't a good one. Heck, it takes a while for the show to get you to ask any kind of questions, but that's for another time. We're talking about the pilots right now. Speaking of which, another important part of a pilot is setting the general feel and storyline for the rest of the series, which 
When it comes to the feel of the show, is why I find it so weird that the Owl House's first episode is just... not very funny? And yes, okay, I completely understand. Comedy is entirely subjective. You just need to glance at TikTok to see that these days. But the thing is, I think the Owl House can be a riot when it comes to its comedic writing, but a lying witch in a warden? Man, it just really doesn't hit for me. Like, do you guys find this funny? You won't get away with this owl lady. Yeah, all right, you did. You got away with it. She got away with it, everybody. Typical. I don't know, man. They just weren't hitting. Most of the jokes are poorly paced and awkward. But I'm not saying it's all dreadful. There's some bangers. However... They unfortunately can't save the setting up the storyline part. Take Amphibia's pilot. Firstly, when it comes to the comedy, it's much closer to the rest of the series than the Owl House is, and thus I am a rather big fan of it. Brig, what did I tell you about leaving the lights on? As for the storyline, it's honestly really simple. Just an introduction to Anne and the planters, then her and Sprig bonding, going through some issues. But it sets up the themes and storylines of the first season really well, the developing bond of Anne and her found family, as well as her self-improvement, self-love, and building connections with those in the town. It actually has a lot of the townspeople that Anne goes about befriending later, befriending later, either in the background or playing a small role. It's really interesting to go back and see. And of course, even after we get our hook at the end of the first part, we get a second cliffhanger in the form of our friend being trapped in Amphibia as well, and clearly in a far worse situation. That's two, possibly three things you really want to see develop and play out. Owl House doesn't quite do this. A good half of the episode is focused on Warden Wrath and the Conformatorium prisoners, which, yeesh, uh, I can understand why two never appeared again, and the one that did never mentions a conspiracy theory again, which is pretty much her whole character in this episode. They're... well, it's weird to say this talking about a cartoon, but they're cartoonish, way too over the top, but not in the fun way, and absolutely beating your head with the message that yes, we get it, it's okay to be fun and different and weird. You already have the main trio to get that idea in a much better way. Wrath himself is a decently cool mini-boss, and I think it's a shame he only shows up in a relevant manner one other time? And even then, it could have been any other random Emperor's Coven mook in his place. So in the end, we spend half the episode with a major focus on incredibly flat characters that, for all intents and purposes, disappear afterwards. Even before that though, it's really bizarre what they spend their time setting up. The very first time Luz meets Ida, this incredible relationship, she gains her respect and interest at first by, as a human, being able to identify exactly how to use and sell the human junk that Ida steals. So that's going to be a part of the relationship then, right? Luz helping Ida in her business? Uh, nope, it's barely ever mentioned again. It feels like it was made up for this first episode and then only ever used out of necessity more than anything else. And it's made even more frustrating because, you know, instead of doing this, there was so much that the Owl House could have focused on, or at the very least hinted towards, in order to get the viewer asking more questions, interested like an amphibia. Ida's curse, Emperor Bellows, King's true backstory. I'm not asking for the first episode to be packed to the brim with plot. It's not like Amphibia's is, but it has just enough to grab your interest long term and the Owl House just doesn't. Heck, they don't even use some of the coolest parts of their lore. The Boiling Isles? The fact that this island is the corpse of some utterly colossal beast? One of the most hands down metal, rawest, no pun intended, settings in fiction? If you just watched the pilot episodes, it just seems like a cookie fantasy world, no real uniqueness to it. And yes, it's not like Amphibia uses the cool part of its lore for the first episode, or the first season really, but to be fair to that show, it's because it's more of a plot twist than anything, so I'll give it a pass. But even then, it already has so much to work with. Heck, 
In all this time talking, I've been mostly referring to Arrow Beast, I've barely touched on Best Friends, and that gives us just enough backstory to both answer our questions and keep us curious, and also sets up Anne via her and Sprig's relationship to be an interesting, flawed character with a lot of baggage to work through. Even beyond that, like I said, neither of these are pilots. But what I do find fascinating is that the Owl House's first episode shares some of the weirdness of pilot episodes. Like, things that don't quite match up to the rest of the show. Like, Hootie's door being his mouth instead of just a normal door, that weird owl person creature that's the focus of the first time we see the Owl House for some reason. Luz supposedly having weak dared arms, but as soon as she's around a lesbian and it also has the most bizarre of plot points. In this case, a pretty important one. The main reason Ida and King have any interest at all in keeping Luz around from the get-go, contraband being protected by a force field that only a human can get through? It's so weird, like, why on earth would something like this exist? Unless Ida was lying about it, which would fit in with the title of the episode, I suppose, but that just raises more questions. To summarise, Amphibia's first episode feels like it belongs as a part of its overall series, and is a really important chapter overall. There's no bloat in this two-parter, everything is well done set up in some way or character building, and that way it's actually really well written. A Lying Witch and a Warden feels like it really needed another draft or two. By the time you're finished the Owl House and go back to it, it almost feels disconnected. While I can absolutely understand that the writers might not have been able to iron out their ideas for the world exactly, wouldn't this episode have been made in a batch with at least a chunk of season 1? There's got to be some kind of behind the scenes story for this, and I can't deny, I'm very fascinated as to what might have happened. I hope this video has been helpful in determining why these pilot episodes, again, not pilot episodes but you get the idea, did or didn't work. If you've been watching my channel recently, you'll know that I think both shows are amazing, and any criticism I give them is because I want them to be as good as they possibly can, even if they're already over, but you, you, you get the idea. I hope you enjoyed the video. To reiterate, I'm so shocked and so happy at how my channel has been growing lately, and I'm incredibly excited to continue this journey with you. You guys keep liking what I make? You know I'm gonna keep making it. What's next? Well, we'll see how this one does, and I might have some more cooking soon enough. Until next time, friends, new and old.